If you're still keeping an Adobe subscription just to make your motion graphics, you don't have to. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to design clean motion graphics inside of Affinity, import it into DaVinci Resolve so you can give it some animation and ditch After Effects for good. So this is what we're making today, and I understand it's not super detailed or just a crazy complex graphic, uh, but it is a proof of concept nonetheless. So if you're an Adobe user paying monthly for just a few jobs every month, or a Resolve user who doesn't know how to import graphics, this video is for you. And by the end, you'll be able to build your own graphics, import them into DaVinci Resolve, animate them, and get it exactly how you want it. No Adobe required. So we're gonna say goodbye to this little guy for now, and we'll get started. So just so you have some context, Adobe is a monthly subscription-based software package, whereas Affinity is free and you used to be able to pay for it just one time to have it. Now it's free, accessible to everyone, thanks to Canva. But in Affinity here, you can see I have my design. So let's say that you're working on something that needs uh, a title sequence of some sort. And like I said, again, this graphic that we're making is pretty basic, but again, serves as a proof of concept. So I'm gonna go over all of my layers here and what each one is, how to export them, and then how to import them inside of DaVinci Resolve. So if you're familiar with the Dune series or maybe have come across the book, this you'll see where this comes from. This is very inspired by the cover of the Dune book by Frank Herbert. And I have the graphic design for that the movie was using where it's just the simple curve, D-U-N-E right here. But yeah, let's break it down. So I have my background layer. This is the sky. I have moon or sun or whatever it is, number one, moon or sun, number two. I have my back dune, middle dune, and front dune. And that's all these are. These are just vector shapes. That's pretty much it. And I have a fill with gradient. Pretty simple stuff here. And then my dune thing here is just the curve. That's that's it. I just made a simple curve, duplicated it three times, and rotated it for each one. So now we're going to go through exporting this, okay? So you want to go to File, Export, Export here. Choose SVG for Scalable Vector Graphic. I'm going to choose for export. I'm going to click export and it'll ask us where we want to save it. I'm saving it right here in this file. Press save. So now I'm going to start another fusion composition here and walk through how to kind of animate it and give it some spice here inside of DaVinci Resolve. So here inside of DaVinci Resolve, I have a timeline matching the same document setup from Affinity. So in this case, it's 4K 3840 by 2116. Uh, but I'm just going to go to effects here, grab a fusion composition, drag it down here, right click, open in fusion page. Now, if you've watched my channel, you know I always like to start my fusion comps with a blank background here, drag this all the way down. There we go, we have a blank background. I'm gonna make this full screen. And the next thing you wanna do is come up to fusion right here, import SVG, right? So now you're gonna wanna find that file that we just saved. I'm gonna open it up right here, press open. It's gonna pop up with this, just want, wanting to confirm your resolution scale, hit okay. It's gonna pop in just like this. Now in the instance that it doesn't have the little output little triangle right here, like you see this little output little square where you can drag. In this case, this one doesn't have that. No worries, there's a couple things you can do. Right click, press expand group, and you'll get this right here. You can open this up and you have all of your nodes. And from here, I just like to right click uh, ungroup and just like that, all the nodes are out and about, and we're ready to get animating. So right away, you wanna connect your last node here. In this case, in my case, it's merge six uh, to your flow line. So here, here we go. Now you can see immediately, there's a couple things that aren't exactly the same. The first thing that pops out to me is that the letters have these sharp edges, whereas before in affinity, they were rounded right here, but no problem. We could fix that real fast. Here are my letters, right? So here's how this works. When you import an SVG into Fusion this way, uh, it creates a series of background nodes with shape masks or mask shapes or whatever, however. And that's exactly just what's going on here. Like for example, here you can see I have my moon, right? And here's the second moon over here, this path right here, uh, and they're the same color, this yellow color, so it gave them the same background node and just attached these two masks here. My letters here work the exact same way. So my first one right here, path seven, my first node, you can see this is the letter D. And if I come over here inside of my inspector and press the rounded button, you see this becomes rounded. Simple as that. So I'm gonna go down and do the same thing with all of my letters here. There is a little bit of housekeeping to do when importing into DaVinci Resolve. Just a, a few moments worth of just organizing your things just because of the nature of how nodes work. You just wanna stay organized. Okay, so let's look at all this. Here we have this color and this square right here. This is our sky, this is the background. Like we were showing before earlier, these two nodes are our moons. This one here is our back dune. This one here is our middle dune. And this one in the front is our front dune. Simple as that. And there's the respective 
uh, colors that go with them. Now, because these dunes were gradients inside of Affinity, you'll notice here this color is lighter than this color, and I do have a gradient working here in my fill colors. Uh, that translated over to DaVinci Resolve perfectly, and you can see that reflected here in the, mic in the background node. You can see the gradient just loads automatically. Awesome, works great. So now, really, all there is to do is just give these different layers or these different elements motion and animation. So check this out. Let's say I want these dunes to pop up one by one, just like they did in this animation right here, right? Because this animation is one, two, three, you know? So I'm gonna show you how I did that. Come back into the Fusion page. So this is dune number one right here. So at frame zero, I'm gonna set a keyframe and I want it to be popped up uh, by the 10th frame. I'm gonna set another keyframe on frame 10. Go back to that first keyframe on frame zero and just drag this center control down. So now as we play, you see it pops up over the course of 10 frames. Simple animation inside of Fusion, that all of the animation inside of Fusion works this way. I'm going to adjust my spline, kind of give it this nice curve here so it has this good motion. Pops up real smooth just like that. And then you just wanna rinse and repeat this process for all of the other different animations or elements within your frame here. So that first dune uh, finished animating in at frame 10. I'm going to start the second one at frame five. I'm gonna set a keyframe here. Now, one thing I don't wanna forget, and I wanna go back and do on the first dune as well, is to enable motion blur. Always gotta have motion blur on. Motion blur is just that secret sauce that makes all your animations look that much better. So now this is what we have. Simple as that, and that's how that comes together. Now I'm just gonna animate these moons real fast. Now the moons pop in, looks good. Now let's give some animation to the letters just real fast. So here in letter D, you can see if I take my length here, uh, I want it to pop in from the top and go down, but the problem is, is that right now, it's popping in from the bottom and moving up. We don't want that. So there is a fix for that. You can see as it, as it stands right now, every single one of these letters, all four of them connect to one background node. We wanna break it down so that every single one of those letters has its own background node that connects individually to the flow line. So let's set that up real fast. I'm gonna move our main line over here so that we have a little bit more space, move this over with it. So we need three more merge nodes because we have four total letters. Three. I'm going to add a white background node over all of them into the green input. Perfect. So now all I'm going to do is take these latter three letters and just connect them individually. So this one connects this way, next this way, and this one connects here, just like that. So now every single one of these letters has their own connection and their own individual uh, application onto the flow line here. So what that means is now we can manipulate every single one of these letters independently of the others. So watch this. I have the letter D selected right here, right? And just to recap before, uh, when you take the length, it goes from the bottom going up. We wanna change that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make space for one more node right here, and I'm gonna take a transform node, all right? Now what I can do with this transform node is I can flip different aspects of the image. So I'm going to do a uh, bottom top flip, a vertical flip, check this out. I'm gonna click that and my D comes all the way down here, but no problem, we can just move it back up this way. And now that it has been flipped, watch what happens when we go back into the path node and change the length. Moves just like that, perfect, that's exactly what we want. So I'm gonna start on frame zero here, keyframe the length. I'm gonna make each letter take 20 frames. So I go to frame 20, bump this up just like that. Done. We'll do the same thing for letter U if it happens to work out that way that we need to. Letter U, letter U goes the way I want it to. It goes from left to right here. So I'm gonna go back to frame 20. This is just the kind of like boring monotonous part of motion graphics design. It's just these little details like this. Uh, and we're making it work within the constraints of fusion and uh, in terms of how fusion works. So now that I've gone through and animated the start of these lines for each one of these letters, it looks super clean to start with. just like that. Now, the last thing I'm gonna do, just for some polish on this animation, is go into the color page and uh, give it some, some polish, you know? So I know right off the bat, I wanna add some saturation. So I have a specific DCTL for saturation, so I'm just gonna drag DCTL on here, uh, take my saturation, drag that up a little bit. It just looks a little richer. Now I'm gonna add some halation. Now I don't want the halation to be visible everywhere. Uh, I just don't want it to be visible on the letters. So I'm gonna take a power window, my circular power window here, drag this up, feather it out a little bit and invert it. So now there is halation you can see on other aspects of the image except for the letters right here, right in the middle. 
and I'm going to pull down the strength just a little bit. I want it to be subtle. I don't want it to be too much. And then the last thing I'm going to add, and this is it, is just a vignette. Now, I don't want the vignette to be too strong uh, over the whole image. So I'm also just going to do a mask right here. I only want it to be on the bottom. And that's that. That's the image. This is how you start with graphics inside of Affinity, bring them into DaVinci Resolve, uh, fusion and animate them to your liking. Now, again, this is just a proof of concept. You could apply this to whatever sort of graphics or illustrations that you create inside of Affinity that you want to animate inside of DaVinci Resolve or integrate into your videos inside of DaVinci Resolve. But what I want to re-emphasize re and reiterate is what makes this so impactful and important is the fact that Affinity is free and DaVinci Resolve Studio is a one-time payment. If you're just starting out learning, don't give Adobe your money. Or if you just have just a few gigs every month, don't give Adobe your money. Like it's money that you've earned, you might as well hold on to it. And if you could do the exact same thing in alternative software, might as well. You just did a motion graphics job that a lot of people would keep Adobe for. Affinity and Resolve can cover a lot of everyday motion graphics work. You just don't need to pay Adobe anymore. It's, it's great. So if you like this video and want more, be sure to check out my website where you can find free filmmaking tools and free filmmaking assets. The most popular one on there is the vertical safe template. So if you're making vertical videos, you know the buttons across whatever app you're posting to aren't going to block your content. You can grab that for free on my website. Might as well just go grab it. There's free lots and other stuff as well. And if you like this video, be sure to subscribe to the channel like this video, dislike it if you disliked it. And most importantly, leave some comments. Let me know how you, how you like the video or what you're thinking or what your opinions are on this, whether or not you will be using this, whether or not you knew you could even import SVG into DaVinci Resolve. And uh, thank you so, so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video.